that you want, it gives you the answer that'll work. Amen. 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 You turn in your Bible this morning to uh, First chapter number four. That's where God's met with us at this week, and uh, we'll try to help you this morning. I I, I want to be a help to you. First Peter chapter number four. Amen. It is good to be saved. Amen. It's good to it's good to know where you're going. Amen. Yeah, man, and everything going on in the world right now, it's good to know if we're out of here next minute, we know where we're going. Yeah, man. If you don't, you can know. Yeah, man. I'm here to tell you. Yeah, man. Say, preacher, how can you know? Because I do. <laughs> yeah, man. So you can. Yeah, man. Let me tell you that. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. First Peter chapter 4. And when you've turned there, please stand with us. I'm going to read one verse this morning. Uh, I feel it's a verse that is uh, for the times that we're in. And... Uh, um, uh, the Lord just met with me on it, gave me a peculiar thought, and uh, I hope it'll be a help to you. Verse Peter, chapter number 4, verse number 7. Look at verse number 7 with us. The Bible says, 1 Peter 4, 7, But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. Let's pray. Father, we desire your help this morning. I need you to... Uh, linger in this place and help us as we try to preach your word, try to say something for you, dear Lord. I pray that you would minister to hearts this morning in Jesus' name, and amen, amen. You can be seated, amen. The Bible says here, but the end of all things is at hand, amen. Now let's just do some Bible study on this real quick. It said the end, amen. That means there's nothing after. Amen. amen. Can I say that to you? Uh, the end, amen, when, uh, uh, when you get to uh, something and it says the end, you ought not expect anything else. Amen. I mean, that's it. Amen. Uh, the end is simply that. It is the end. Amen. And then it says the end of all things. Amen. Say, so, preacher, what's that mean? I'm going to tell you my message title in a minute, but that means I could preach on anything this morning. Because <laughs> it's all things. Amen. amen. All things. Amen. Everything. Amen. The end of all things. That, that encompasses uh, everything you can think of. Amen. The end of all things is, and then it says, at hand. Say, so, preacher, what's that mean? That means it's right on the verge of happening. Amen. That means at any moment, amen, it could happen. Amen. That means this, that I might not finish this message. Amen. amen. That means this, we might, if I do finish this message, we might not be back tonight. Amen. amen. We might not, uh, uh, you might, praise the Lord, you might not have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, 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 and if you do end up having to go to work tomorrow, you might not be back Wednesday night. Amen? And so on and so forth. That means this. The end of all things is at hand. That means this Bible school coming up might be the very last Bible school that's ever done. Mm. I, 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 let me say this. Boy, I, I like the Lord got me on this. The end of all things is at hand. That means this. The knocking on doors we're going to do this Saturday and leaving those hangers might be the last time anyone ever does that. Boy, let that sink in. Let that sink in. It's at hand. Amen. The Bible tells us here, it says, be ye therefore sober. Amen. Amen. And watch under prayer. Amen. It tells us what we need to do in these times. Amen. When we're at the end of all things. Amen. And when we're on the verge of getting out of this world. Amen. It tells us to be sober. Amen. You can argue with me all day on whether or not it's right or wrong to drink alcohol. Amen. But the Bible tells us to be sober. Amen. That pretty much settles every other verse in there. Amen. I heard somebody that said, well, preacher, they got wine in the Old Testament. Amen. Yeah. And you read about it. Every time wine come about in the Old Testament, destruction come afterwards, amen? Because wine is a mocker. <laughs> Strong drink is raging. And whoever deceived thereby is not wise, according to Proverbs chapter number 20, amen? It said, be ye therefore sober, amen? And it said, and watch unto prayer, amen? We need to keep praying. We need to keep watching, amen? But I want to preach on this thought this morning and using this verse as my text and... and uh, 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 I want you to keep your Bible open and, 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 and really really think this morning. 
But I want to preach on this thought on four things that are ending soon. Four things that are ending soon. That are going to come to a close soon. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. We're on the verge of getting out of this world. Man, I'm ready for it. Amen, I'm ready to go, amen. Amen, the Apostle Paul, amen, he wrote in, in 2 Timothy, he said, for I am now ready, amen, to be offered, amen. Hey, friend, listen, amen, uh, you and I, amen, uh, we need to be ready. If you're not ready, amen, uh, uh, then you need to get ready this morning, amen. Make preparation, amen. Uh, but let me say this to you, friend, amen. It ain't going to be long, amen, till the church is going out of here, amen. The church is not going to uh, uh, be in uh, this world, amen. We're going to come back, rule and reign with Christ if I read my Bible correctly, amen. Uh, but, friend, amen, we're going to be gone from the troubles and the trials of this world, amen. The Bible said in uh, uh, Romans chapter number 8 and verse number uh, 18, amen, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed within us, amen. That means that uh, we're about to head out, amen, and the things of this world and the things of this life are going to be no more, amen, they're going to be uh, no more, amen, and we can rejoice in that fact, but I want to tell you this this morning and, and give you this thought on four things that are going to end soon, four things that are ending soon, say, preacher, what are they, you keep your Bible open this morning, you listen quick, I'll preach quick, amen, amen, but let me say this to you, the first thing that's going to end soon. The Bible says the end of all things is at hand. The first thing the Lord brought to my mind this week that's going to end soon, amen, is the opportunity to witness. The opportunity to witness. Brother Eddie read before the service this morning, or as we open the service this morning, on over there, uh, that soul, let your light shine. And then it said, among men. Amen. Uh, friend, uh, the Bible, in and, and that text, it says, uh, neither the men uh, light a candle, amen, to put it under a bushel, amen, uh, to hide it, amen. It ain't going to do any good under a bushel, amen. It ain't going to do any good for you to be saved, amen, and not tell somebody about it. Amen. Uh, friend, let me tell you, our light's supposed to shine among men. Amen. And let me say this to you. Amen. When, if our light's supposed to shine among men, then we've got to shine. Amen. Not be darkness. Not put a damper on everything. Amen. I understand the world's bleak. Amen. I understand things are difficult. Amen. Right now in this time. Amen. And you can either get caught up in it. Amen. And get uh, encompassed with it. Amen. Or you can be a light that pierces through the darkness. Amen. Uh, friend, let me tell you. Amen. I don't know if you've ever noticed this. Amen. Uh, but uh, 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 this is just kind of common sense. Amen. If you sit in a dark room very long. Amen. And somebody comes by and switches that light on. It hurts you. Can I say that? It affects you. Amen. You'll say, whoa, I wasn't planning on that. Don't do that. I remember when I was a kid and, and growing up and I'd be uh, asleep and mom come in there and, and she'd go to wake me up and, and, and it wouldn't work. Amen. And it, I mean, I just, I, I was awake. I'd just be laying there. Amen. And she'd flick that light on. Boy, it'd make me so mad. It'd start my day off mad. Amen. I'd be mad the rest of the week. Amen. <laughs> amen. That's why I'm mad now. Amen. Amen. But no, amen. Uh, uh, say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this in the darkest of situations, the light shines the brightest. Amen. My friend, right now we are, uh, say preacher, I, I don't like the things going on in the world. I don't like the darkness that's going on in the world. Me neither. Amen. Uh, but friend, let me say this to you. Amen. We've got more of an opportunity to witness right now than you and I have ever had in our entire lives. Amen. We've got more an opportunity uh, to be a light than we've ever been able to. Why? Because things are darker. Amen. I believe than we've ever seen. Amen. Amen. And you read your Bible. Amen. Uh, they're going to get darker. Amen. But that shouldn't change you and I in the fact, amen, that we must be a light. Amen. We must, amen, be a light to this world. Amen. The opportunity to witness. Let me tell you, friend, it's, it, it's, it's ending soon. Amen. It's going to leave us soon. Amen. The opportunity uh, to, uh, to tell somebody, amen, about Christ. The Bible said in, in Mark chapter number 16 and verse number 15, He said unto them, uh, Go out unto all the world and preach the gospel. Unto every creature. Amen. Unto every creature. 
Amen. Uh, that tells me this. Amen. Uh, the world needs a good dose of this. Amen. I remember uh, the little children song we used to sing. Red, yellow, black and white. They're all precious in His sight. Amen. I believe some adults need to start singing some children's songs. Amen. And figure it out. Amen. Go out and preach the gospel to every preacher. Amen. I- I'm going to tell you. Amen. Uh, some of y'all are going to be depressed when you get to heaven and find out there's going to be a lot of black folk there. There's going to be a lot of Hispanics there. Amen. There's going to be a lot of those there. Amen. You might as well get to loving them now. Amen. Amen. Boy, that's going to happen. So, yeah, thank you. Amen. Somebody help me. Amen. Amen. You might as well get to loving them now and get used to them now. Amen. Because God loves them. Red, yellow, black, and white. They're all precious in His sight. Amen. Go out and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Friend, the gospel does not shy away. Hey, let me say this to you. Amen. Uh, that means every creature. That means uh, the drunk creatures. We ought to go preach the gospel to them. That means the gay creatures. See? Amen. I'm talking about the homos. Amen. Uh, we ought to go preach the gospel to them. Amen. Amen. I say, preacher, why? Amen. Well, if we shun them away, uh, let me say, tell you this, friend. If we shun them away and we keep them away, then they're never going to hear and their soul's going to end up in hell. Amen. And that blood is going to be on our hands. Right. Amen. It's going to be on our hands that we, we didn't take it to them. Amen. Uh, he said, go out into all the world. That means there's no limits. That means there's no limits. That means, that means this, everyone must hear. Everyone must hear. Amen. Oh, preacher, I can't go there. Sure you can. Sure you can. Amen. You might not be able to, but God can through you. Amen. And God might be, you might be the vessel that God's going to use for that place. I don't know. Let me ask you this this morning. No, I want you to uh, think about this. I really want you to think about this thought. Amen. The opportunity to witness is about to end soon. Let me ask you this. Who is that one person in your life? In your life. Now, don't worry about the person in everybody else's life this morning. You worry about that one person in your life that you need to witness to the most. That person that without a doubt this morning, amen, you know they're on their way to hell. Amen. And you've got the means Say, preacher, well, I don't know how to get a hold of them. Yeah, you do. It's 2020. <laughs> amen. You can get a hold of anybody. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, just about it. Amen. Uh, we got a Facebook. We got a, uh, you, get, you can get an ad, you can pull an address from anywhere. Amen. You can do a Google search on their name and find out where they live. Amen. And folks are so worried about being tracked. Amen. Just Google your own name. You'll find out how tracked you already are. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It ain't that different. Amen. But let me say this to you. Let, let me say this to you. Who? Who's that one person that you need to witness to? That you need to? I mean, without a doubt. Amen. You know they're on their way to hell. Friend, let me say this to you. Your time to witness to them is running low. It's running low. The Bible said, and, and, and this kind of uh, can go along with this entire message, but the Bible said in Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Amen. I believe we'd agree with that second part. The days are evil. <laughs> Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Uh, if the days are evil, then you and I ought to redeem the time. How do we redeem the time? We use the time we got. It's time to quit putting off witnessing to others. Can I say this? I, I touched on this Wednesday night, but let me touch on it again. You know that Last Supper, amen, where it said in Luke chapter 14 and verse 23, it said, the, the master of the house said unto the servants, go out to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. You know, I'm glad of, of Acts chapter 2 and verse 47, amen, where the Lord added daily to the church. I'm glad of that, Amen. But you know, you know why he added daily to the church? Because of everything that happened before in those verses before. In verses 43 through 46, you'll find out why the Lord added daily to the church. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Uh, it ain't going to do you a bit of good. You're not going to be a witness whatsoever if you sit around and just hope that they come in. Amen. We're going to have to go get them. We're going to have to go get them. He said, go out. Amen. I, I, now, ain't nothing wrong. Amen. Matter of fact, amen, I'm awful fond of being in the house of God. <laughs> amen. I like it. Amen. I think uh, uh, some of y'all ought to try it three times a week. It ain't hurt me one bit. 
Amen. That's why I'm in such good health that I'm in right now. Amen. Amen. I can run around and everything. Amen. Well, let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Uh, I like the house of God, but friend, we can't spend forever in the house of God with just me and my foreign no more. We've got to go out and bring others into the house of God. Because if we love the house of God as much as we say we do, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like this. Amen. If, if I uh, go to a restaurant, amen, that's, that's really good, amen, I can see i got to put ter- terms and, uh, things in terms that I can understand food. Amen. And, and you're Baptist, so you ought to be able to understand food. Amen. But if I go to a restaurant, amen, that I say is, that it's really good, you know what? Uh, say, say it's down there in Knoxville or something. If I'm on a work trip with my buddies, amen, and we're driving through Knoxville and say they're hungry, I say, hey, I know a spot. Amen. Hey, let's go here because it's going to be really good. Amen. And if it's and if I really like it, I want them to really like it. Amen. Hey, let me say this to you, friend. That ought to be how we feel about the house of God. If you really like it, amen. If you really love it, amen. If it's really a priority to you, amen, then go out and tell somebody else about it. Amen. Invite somebody else along to it. Amen. Because, uh, friend, let me tell you, amen. Amen. Time is running out. Boy, how do we approach reaching others? Do we just say they'll come to us? Because they ain't going to. They ain't going to. Amen. That, that's not. Uh, uh, that's, that's not. I, I think there's nothing wrong with with praying that God will send people in. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But make sure you're willing to go out. Make sure you're willing to go out and get them. Amen. A lot. A lot of folks. Amen. And I, I say, preacher, you've been awful mean. I know. But <laughs> Amen. I'm just learning to accept it. Amen. But. Uh, 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 a lot of folks, amen, they'll pray that God do all these things. But if God sends somebody to do this, God sends somebody to do that. God sends somebody to witness to this one. God sends somebody to witness to that one. But they'll never pray, God send me. And now, <laughs> whoa, 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 I got, I got plans. <laughs> Lord, I pray that you would just burden that preacher's heart. <laughs> that he'll do this and he'll do that. I brought him to church, and, 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 and Lord, I was just praying that you would have the preacher preach on this specific verse that you have laid on my heart for three weeks. And the preacher didn't preach on it, so now I'm mad at the preacher. But he laid it on your heart for three weeks. <laughs> Amen. And the Bible said, he didn't just tell them, those of you that are called to preach, go out and preach into every creature in all the world. Amen. Hey, friend, all of us are preachers. Amen. All of us are supposed to go out, amen, and take that message out, amen. Uh, friend, let me tell you, amen, if God puts something on your heart, you better do it, friend, amen. Time's running out, amen. Time is running out, amen. Uh, how do we approach that reaching others, amen? Time is running out. Let me say this, four things that are ending soon. One's the opportunity to witness. Let me say this one. Some of y'all might start shouting on this next point. I'm scared. But the next thing that's going to end soon is the opportunity to work. Well, I, I like, I say this a lot, but I, I like Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, don't you? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not yourself is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Praise the Lord. I'm glad, I'm glad that my salvation is not dependent on me. Boy, ain't you good, ain't you glad of that? Amen. Because there's been a lot of things, whew, there's been a lot of things that's been dependent on me that ain't worked out. Amen. And unless you're perfect, which you're not, according to my Bible, uh, there's been a lot of things that's probably dependent on you and it ain't worked out. Amen. 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 Uh, so so I'm, I'm glad my salvation not dependent on me. But let's not neglect verse number 10 of Ephesians chapter number 2. It says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained. Amen. That we should walk in them. You know what that means? That, that means this. That, that means this. God has already mapped out the plan. God has already made. I believe this. I believe if God saves you, God will put you in a work somewhere. He'll put you in a work somewhere. Amen. He'll put you to doing something uh, for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I believe that. Now, let me say this to you, friend, uh, without a doubt. Amen. The opportunity to work is, is going to end soon. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. The Apostle Paul, he wrote in, in, in Romans uh, uh, chapter number 12, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is... Your reasonable service. Your reasonable service. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Say, preacher, I can't work. Yeah, you can. That verse right there just ripped you apart. Amen. Yeah, you can. 
Amen. You know what that, that phrase, I was listening to a preacher today. I never really even thought about it. It's funny how you don't think of these things until, until God just shows them to you. But uh, I never thought about that phrase, I beseech you. You know what Paul's saying? Paul's not saying, hey, you ought to work. Hey, you ought to, you ought to, uh, you ought to come by and help out of church sometime. You ought, to, you ought to do this. You ought to do something for the Lord. He's saying, I'm begging you. <laughs> like my life depends on it. You ought to do something for the Lord. Uh, but say uh, it's important to me. It is. It is highly sought after for me for you to do something for the Lord. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Amen. He's that, say, preacher. What's it mean when he says brethren? It means he's talking to saved folk. Amen. He's talking to you and I. Amen. That are saved and on our way to heaven. Amen. That we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. That means we ought to be holy. That means we ought to be holy. Amen. Amen. Acceptable. And it said that, that is our reasonable service. Friend, let me say this. Say, preacher, I can't work. According to that verse, you can. Reasonable service. Amen. God won't put you in something uh, that you cannot do. Can I say that? God, God didn't. God, God, uh, uh, God put me behind this pulpit. Now, to me, I, I, that's something I cannot do. To me, that's something I cannot do. Amen. But to God, it's something I can do. God, God said, here, I'll show you. Amen. Uh, can I tell you this? Amen. When God was dealing with me about preaching, uh, that was my biggest gripe is I can't do it. Amen. Can I tell you this? Whatever God's dealing with you about this morning, let me guess. Your biggest gripe is you can't do it. Amen. Uh, but friend, let me say you this. Amen. It said it's your reasonable service. Amen. God, God's not uh, unreasonable. God's not unreasonable, amen. God will put you in the ministry, amen. And let me say this. God won't put you in a ministry that won't be successful. Amen. You ever thought about that? Why would he? I mean, really. <laughs> Think about that. Why would he put you in a ministry that won't be successful? Amen. God won't do that. Amen. You'll put yourself in a ministry that won't be successful. Amen. But God won't put you in a ministry that won't be successful. Amen. Amen. But if you're presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice that's holy and that's acceptable unto God, then he'll put you in a ministry where you'll be successful. Amen. See how that's dependent on you and I, not him. Amen. On that part. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. The Bible says over in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse 58. Amen. Uh, 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 let, me, let me turn to it real quick. I want to I kind of uh, dive into this a little bit deeper than I'm planning to. But, but, but uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you ain't got to turn here. But verse number 58, you know that whole chapter. It's a great chapter. Amen. Preach from it 500 times, feel like. Amen. But verse 58 of that chapter said, Therefore, after everything in this chapter, that chapter talks about, amen, how the importance of the resurrection. It talks about how Paul was least of sinners. Amen. He, he said, uh, uh, I, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. I mean, it talks about, amen, uh, what's wrong in the church. Amen. It talks about, amen, say, preacher, what do you mean? I don't believe it talks about what's wrong in the church. Amen. Uh, uh, he said, and why stand we, we in jeopardy every hour? Amen. That's the church he's talking about. Amen. He's talking about the church in that chapter. Amen. He said some things. He said, Awake to righteousness in this chapter and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. And I speak this to your shame. Amen. You think I was a mean preacher? You wouldn't have been able to sit under Apostle Paul. Amen. He said, I speak this to your shame. Amen. Hey, friend, listen. It talks about that. It talks about us being resurrected. It talks about us getting that new body. It talks about us uh, have, claiming the victory. Amen. In our life over, uh, over the devil. Amen. And over death. Amen. Uh, but verse number 58 said, Therefore. Say, so preacher, what's that mean? Because of everything in this chapter. <laughs> Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always. Abounding in the work of the Lord. It says, For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So, preacher, what do you mean by the, 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 the opportunity to work is, is going to end soon? Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. I, I believe this tonight, or this morning. Amen. I believe this. Amen. I believe it's worth it to work for God. <laughs> Amen. Uh, it says your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Uh, friend, amen. I believe this. Let me say this to you. I believe you can do a lot of work in vain. Amen. Uh, let, me, let me say it like this. Amen. You can work your whole life away to have a nice car. And you can work your whole life away to have a nice house. Amen. You can work your whole life away to have a big bank account. And it's going to blow your mind. But ain't none of those three things wrong. 
Amen. Having a nice car ain't wrong. Amen. Having a nice house ain't wrong. Having a big bank account ain't even wrong. Amen. If you do, holler at me. I'll help you with it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, I am a great financial advisor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can advise where, which hand you want me to put. Anyway, uh, but, but let, me, let me say this, friend. Let, let me say this to you. Having those, having those things ain't wrong. But don't waste your whole life working for them things. Friend, let me say this. It said that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. The things you do for God are not going to be in vain. Amen. The things you do for you and for everybody else. Amen. A friend, uh, the Bible said over there in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, Amen, there's going to be a judgment day that's going to come. Amen. And our works are going to be tried by fire. Amen. And it mentions uh, three things that are going to burn and three things that won't burn. Amen. And say, preacher, what do you mean? Amen. I'm, I'm not going to turn there for a second time this morning. Amen. Uh, but let me say this. The end of all that said, and ye shall suffer loss. Why? Because some things are going to burn. You know what's, burnt, what, what's being tried by fire is our work. <laughs> Amen. Uh, friend, let me say this to you, friend. I, I believe uh, that you and I, amen, uh, we're going to suffer loss in the fact, amen, that we've worked, amen, and put some effort in some things that were not worth it. Amen. That were not worth it. Amen. Old oh, friend, let me say this. A lot of folks, amen, they'll, they'll put a lot of effort into, uh, into making sure, amen, that, uh, 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 that everything is just uh, neat and perfect. And, uh, and oh, we, uh, we got to worry about what everybody else thinks and what everybody else is, is concerned about how I look or, or how I dress or, or how this. Friend, you ought to get concerned how God thinks you look, how God thinks you dress. Amen. You ought to get concerned with them things and then it'll take care of your witness to everybody else. Amen. You ain't doing it for everybody else. Amen. Amen. I believe it. You ought to look right. I believe you ought to act right. Amen. But do it for God. Amen. You do that work for God. Amen. And God takes care of it. Amen. It's not in vain. Amen. I believe this. You can, you can dress like a Christian. You can act like a Christian and talk like a Christian and walk like a Christian. But if you're doing it for the preacher, it won't amount to a hill of beams. Amen. Can I tell you that? It won't amount to anything. Amen. If you're doing it for your parents, you're doing it for your family, you're doing it for, just for the church, it won't amount to a hill of beams. Your labor in the Lord is not in vain, is what the Bible's telling us, friend. Amen. What you do for God, amen. Not what you do to get a pat on the back. Boy, this would be a good one. Not what you do to get a paycheck. Man, let me tell you, let me, I, I, I am thankful. I, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm grateful for it. I, I'm grateful that, that y'all voted to pay me. <laughs> amen. I, I'm grateful for that. I, I, I certainly am. I mean, I don't, I don't take that lightly. Let me tell you, friend, if I come over here and they said, we ain't got no money to, to pay the pastor, I'd still be your pastor. Amen. I'd still be here. I'd still love you just the same. Amen. I'd still preach the truth to you just the same. And let me say that, this ain't for sale. <laughs> Amen. Hey, can I say this to you? Amen. According to my Bible in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 23, this ain't for sale. <laughs> Amen. Buy the truth. And sell it not. Amen. This ain't for sale. Amen. Hey, friend, listen. If we, if we was to lose all the money in the church tomorrow, amen. Hey, I still think God's good. <laughs> I still think God's on the throne. I still think God will take care of us. Amen. I still think God can pack the place out. Amen. I still think God can keep the lights on. I still think God, amen, can keep the, uh, the, the church moving. Amen. I still think God can keep blessing us. Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. The labor, amen, that you do for the Lord. Amen. That's what's not going to be in vain. Amen. You doing it for anything else. Amen. Get right with God this morning. Amen. Let me say that to you. Amen. You doing it for anything else. Get right with God. Let me say this. That leads to this. That leads to my next point. Four things that are ending soon. The opportunity to witness is ending soon. Let me say this. The opportunity to work is ending soon. But let me throw this one at you. The opportunity to get right. It's ending soon. It's ending soon. You know, I believe there's, uh, 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 there's a lot of folks. I believe there's a lot of folks that are saved. They just ain't living right. Amen. They just ain't living right. Amen. And that's, uh, that's wrong. That's wrong. I'm old school. I understand that. I, th this, just, this won't be preached in a lot of churches. Amen. Say, so, preacher, how do you know? Because I've, I've listened to a lot of those popular messages. Let me put it like that. I've listened to a lot of those messages from those preachers that preach in the concert hall churches. I, I, I don't get up here and, 
and 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 and, and talk about how wrong those churches are and, and vain. I do my homework on them. I I have a problem when they stand at the end of the service and hold their hand up and say, "If you lift your hand with me and you repeat this prayer after me, you're saved." I have a problem with any preacher, by the way, that tells somebody they're saved. Amen. 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 Uh, but 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 let me say this: that uh, one thing I, I, I seem to never hear in those messages is that you need to get right. Amen. You need to get right. They'll say you need to get saved, but they won't ever tell you you need to get right. I don't know about you, but there's been some times I've fallen out of fellowship with God. I've had to get right. Amen. I, let, let me say this to you, friend. Let me say this. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean, with this point, what I'm really saying is the altar calls about the end. The altar calls about then. Can I say this to you? I didn't open these altars. I didn't open them. Amen. Matter of fact, the altars are always open. Amen. Uh, at any point in the service, at any point after the service, the altars are always open. Friend, if you need to come pray at an altar, amen, call me during the week. I will make a way to get over here and pray with you. Amen. Because the altar, amen, is, is, is never closed. Amen. Uh, say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this, I didn't open the altars. And by that logic and by that fact, I don't have the ability to close them. No preacher, amen, that's ever stood. I've heard some great men of God, amen, uh, some, uh, that, that I absolutely adore and, 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 and believe uh, 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 that, th that they are truthful and, and they, they have the power of God on them, but none of them have the ability to close the altars. Amen. Let me say, and, and, and shame on any of them. That say there's another time to pray. There's always a time to pray. Amen. Amen. We'll stop everything and pray. Amen. There's time for that. Amen. But let me say this to you. The altar call is about to end. The altar call is about to end. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Amen. I, I stole this from my... I, I say this all the time because I stole it from my pastor. He used, to, he used to say it a lot. But at the end of the altar call, sometimes I'll say... I'll say, well, you, what you're saying is everything's okay between you and God. Because that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. If you, you know, if you, if you don't make a move, amen, when God's telling you to move, then you're, saying, uh, then you're saying everything's okay, amen, even though they might not be. So, preacher, why do you say that? Because it convicted the far out of me. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. Well, I never forget. I, I, I never forget a service. See, man, uh, that, that uh, God, uh, the preacher would get up and preach all over me. Amen. You know, and you know the preacher's preaching all over because you didn't have time to think about everybody else. <laughs> Amen. I mean, he's preaching all over you. Amen. And, and then, and then it comes time for the altar call. Amen. And he says, if you ain't right with God, come to the altar. Amen. And you stand up and and you think, well, that message might have been for somebody else. You didn't even think about nobody else through the whole message, but you, amen. And, and then, and then, uh, 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 you knowing good and well, you need to go to the altar, amen. And, and the preacher looks at the piano player, says, "Play another verse, uh, uh, sing another line. Let's go one more." And you sit there, oh my goodness, goodness gracious, I gotta. Uh, let's just stop. Let's just finish, amen. And finally, the preacher gives the nod, and and and, and they equip. Made it. I made it through in my heathen state. And then he says, well, what you're saying is everything's right between you and God. <clears throat> that dagger hits right there. That dagger hits right there. Because you know what? I, at that, that point, I don't know about you, but I can feel on my face that everybody in that room knows I was lying. Hey, Amen. I mean, I know it's personal. Nobody wants to agree with that. Hey, Amen. But let me, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you, friend. Amen. The altar call is about to end. Boy, and I hope everything's right between you and God. Amen. Because if it ain't, amen. Boy, I, 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 I'd hate for God to come back and me not be in fellowship with Him. Amen. I, I'd hate for, uh, for God to come back uh, and, and, and me not be in fellowship with Him. Amen. Me not uh, be able, amen, to commune with Him. Amen. Because, amen, I wasn't right with Him. Amen. I'd hate that. Amen. Let me say this, friend. You cannot lose your salvation. You cannot lose your salvation. Amen. Uh, uh, once saved, always saved. That's Bible. If you don't believe that, get with me after service. I'll show you in the Bible where that's Bible. Amen. Amen. Uh, but let me say this to you, friend. You can get dirty. You can't lose your salvation, but you can get a dirty soul. 
Boy, you sure can. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean, you think about David. David had to get right. Psalm 51. Go read Psalm 51. Psalm 51 will help you. Uh, 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 if you ever get out of fellowship with God, go read Psalm 51. Read it over and over and over again until you get right with God. <laughs> Amen. I mean, that's just about the best way I can tell you to do it. Amen. Uh, but you know what he said? He, he, he asked the Lord for forgiveness. He said, creating me a clean heart. They're creating me a clean heart. You know, uh, can I say this to you? When God has to create something new that goes in place of what was there before, can I tell you this? Sometimes he has to remove what was there before. Amen. Sin's not without consequence. Sin bears a consequence. Amen. Amen. Uh, the wages of sin are, is death. Amen. Uh, friend, I, I'm glad, amen, that Jesus paid the cost, amen, and paid that price for me on Calvary's hill. Amen. Uh, but let me tell you, friend, sin bears a consequence to you and I. Amen. It'll take some things from us. Amen. It'll take some, uh, 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 it'll take some good things from us. Amen. It certainly will. Amen. But let me say this, friend. Amen. And David had to get right. Amen. And when David got right, you know what he said unto God in Psalm 51? He said, Restore unto me the joy. Of thy salvation, Amen. He, he didn't even uh, 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 he didn't even claim it as his salvation. He said, "Of thy salvation." Amen. He said, restoring to me the joy of thy salvation. Let me say this to you, friend, and get a hold of this this morning. You cannot lose your salvation, but you sure can get dirty. Amen. And when you get dirty, amen, you'll get mad, and you'll get sad. Amen. And you'll get messed up. Amen. And you'll get hurt. Amen. And you'll get uh, uh, ticked off at everybody else around you. Amen. And you'll get to where you don't want to be around God's people. Amen. Because they're clean. <laughs> amen. And you're dirty. Amen. And you'll get to where uh, you don't fit in no more with God. God's people, because they're clean, amen, they're living right, amen, and you're dirty, amen, and you'll get to where you don't fit in, in this book, because this book is clean, and this book is right, and you're dirty, amen, and you'll get for long, amen, you won't fit on the pew, amen, because the, the word of God, amen, that's preached out of this pulpit, amen, is clean, and it's right, and you're dirty, amen, and it won't take long, you'll either get clean, or you'll leave, and boy, I want you to get clean. I don't desire that you leave. Saw a preacher last night. He, he put something. I, I shouldn't even bring this up. And he put something on Facebook. One of my friends sent it to me. He said, look at this. Read, read the comments on this. And uh, he, he'd said something very, very dividing. He, 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 he uh, let me put it like this. He, he, Proverbs chapter number six, uh, where it says, God hates he that stoweth this court among the brethren. If I knew this preacher, I would have commented and told him, right now God hates you. Because all you're doing is throwing disco. He, he'd put something on there. And, and somebody had, had, had said something back to him and said, I, I wouldn't want to be around somebody with the spirit you've got. And he said, well, don't come to my church then. We don't want you. And you know what? I hate to say it like this, but that's an independent, fundamental, premillennial Baptist church in Greenville, Tennessee that he passed. Say, preacher, what are you saying in that? I'm saying this. That got all over me. I wanted to reply back and say, boy, you better, you might as well turn in your license. Don't you ever tell somebody not to come to your church. Friend, I, don't you ever tell somebody don't come to my church. Friend, amen, I, I want to preach to them. Amen. If they're dirty, let's get clean. <laughs> let's get clean instead of getting gone. Amen. Instead of getting out here in this world and rolling around. Amen. Hey, friend, when you're dirty, your fellowship with the world will be a lot better because the world's dirty. Amen. Get clean and get fellowship with God. Amen. Get right with God. Amen. Let me say, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Now I get to my last point. Let me ask you this, though, and really ask yourself this. Is everything. Say, preacher, what's everything? I'm just going to blow your mind. But that means everything. Amen. That means uh, your home life. That means your family life. Amen. That means your love life. Amen. That means your friendship life. Amen. That means your walk with God. Amen. That means your work life. And that means your uh, life in the church. Amen. Is everything. Everything right with God. Right with God for you this morning. Last but not least, four things that are ending soon. That the opportunity to witness is going to end soon. The opportunity to work is going to end soon. The opportunity to get right, the altar call, it's going to end soon, friend. It's going to end soon. But let me say this most of all, boy, it breaks my heart. 
but the opportunity to go to heaven. It's going to end soon. Amen. See, these first three points, they all apply to us that are saved. But this is all on the lost here. Friend, the opportunity to go to heaven is going to end soon. Amen? It's going to be gone. So, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this Satan lied. Listen to me this morning. If you're lost, you listen to me good this morning. Satan lied to you. You don't have all the time in the world. Satan lied to you. You don't have all the time in the world. Boy, I tell you. I got a friend of mine. I, I, I've said, I've told you all this five times already, but I got a friend of mine that got up and testified a few, few months ago at a church service I went to, and he got up and testified. He's 15 years old. He got up and testified, and, and man, you talk about, he's a preacher, and he, he preached to me in his testimony, and he got up, and he said, I'm thankful that God saved me at a young age. He said, I'm thankful there's things I missed out on. He said, I don't regret it that God saved me at a young age. Can I echo that this morning? Amen. Let me say this to you, friend. If you're here this morning, and you're lost, and you're at a young age, you won't regret getting saved. You won't regret it. Matter of fact, that's what we're going to... Because let me say this to you. Let me just tell you the truth of it this morning. Amen. Let's say uh, uh, this thing does go on for a few more years. Amen. Eventually, amen, I ain't going to be here. This thing goes on another hundred years, amen. I'm not planning to live to 126. I'm hoping the Lord takes me out way before then, amen. 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 I'm going to be a bitter old man if that's the point, amen. I'll tell you that much, amen. But let me, amen, I'm going to be out of here, amen. Hey, friend, uh, Brother Eddie that uh, sends and leads the singing and teaches the Sunday school, amen, and opens up, amen. Uh, friend, let me say this. Uh, 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 he's going to be out of here before long, amen, if this thing goes on, amen. Uh, those that, uh, that come and, and were here yesterday, Amen. Uh, at the steps of the church, amen, to go out and hang door hangers, amen, and tell people, amen, uh, that Bible school is coming up, amen. Hey, it ain't going to be long that they ain't going to be here no more, amen. They're going to go out of here, amen. Hey, friend, listen, amen. Uh, those that uh, stayed behind last week, amen, uh, for the Bible school meeting and said, I want to work in Bible school, hey, those pews are going to be empty, amen, of those people, amen, of those exact people, amen, uh, before long, amen, if this thing goes on. Somebody, is going to have to fill them. Somebody's going to have to fill them. Somebody's going to have to. Boy, that's a... Uh, say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. I heard somebody say the other day, well, I wouldn't want to bring a child into this world. I would. I certainly would. Because my Bible says you train up a child in the ways you go and when he's old and not part of it. I'd love to bring up a child in this world with this Bible at the centerpiece of the house. Amen. Letting them know that this world's wicked. Amen. Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. Uh, there's a lot. Of, I, I'm just going to break some barriers. Amen. Maybe if the, I probably make some folks mad that'll be watching this video eventually, but that's okay. But, but let me say it like this. I, I've, I've got some folks that don't like me. They don't like my mom and dad because I went to public school my whole life. I ain't go to no Christian school. And if you do, if you go to Christian school, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. It's between you and the Lord. Amen. But, but I mean, I, I, I've had them stand up and tell me that ain't nothing good comes out of somebody that goes to public school. Because they're stupid is what it is. Say, preacher, I wouldn't say that. I know you wouldn't. That's why God called me to preach and you just sit there. Amen. But, but, but let me say this. Let's say all these things, amen. Let me, let me tell you this. I've not been perfect. No way, shape, or form have I not been perfect. But I stand before you right here today. I ain't telling you anything good about me. I'm telling you, I stand before you right here today. Some of y'all ain't getting that. I stand before you in the pulpit preaching a message out of a King James Version Bible. Amen. Today. Telling you about how to get to heaven. Today. You know why? You know why? It wasn't because I went to that public school or I went to a private school. Either one. It wasn't because of either of those things. It was because I had some parents at home that taught me that the things you're going to encounter in this public school are wrong. But this Bible's right. 
Hey, you're going to encounter some things in this life, but this Bible's right. Hey, guess what, friend? I'm glad I, let me just say it personally on my account, amen, I'm glad I went to the public school, amen, because I work a public job, amen, and I've encountered a lot worse at my public job than I ever did in the public school, amen. Uh, but let me tell you, friend, amen, uh, say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this, this Bible's right. Amen. Quit relying on everybody else to parent your child. And why don't you get the Bible out and start parenting them. Amen. 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 Boy, I'm telling you what. Amen. Uh, friend, uh, this Bible is correct. Amen. Uh, train up a child in the ways you go. Friend, listen. The opportunity to go to heaven is dwindling away. Amen. Even for those of you that are young. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. We've complicated salvation. We have. Bible ain't. God ain't. We have. Amen. I, I mean... Uh, it's still just as simple as what we've been preaching on on Sunday nights. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's it. <laughs> that's it. There's no prerequisite. The only prerequisite is you're lost. <laughs> Amen. That's it. Amen. You ain't got to go to so many church services. You ain't got to go through discipleship training and all them other things. Amen. Amen. They ain't, uh, friend, that ain't biblical. <laughs> I believe we ought to disciple folks, but friend, go making a program, discipleship training, and all that garbage, amen. That ain't biblical. That ain't biblical. That's something man's come up with to sound good. Amen. Is all it is. Amen. Amen. But let me say this to you, friend. Let, let, me, let, let, let me say this to you. Amen. Salvation's simple. It's calling upon the name of the Lord, period. Amen. God will take care of it. We have folks in this church that'll pray with you. Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? How are you sure we have folks in this church that'll pray with you? Because I'm one of them. If nobody else will, I will. Amen. Friend, let me tell you, amen. Let me tell you this. And salvation is so simple. But if you're not saved, you will go to hell. Say, so, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. If you're listening to the sound of my voice this morning, I mean, if you're here and listening to it, if you're on that camera and listening to it, amen, watching that video, and listening to my voice, and you do not know Christ as your Savior, you are, as of today, on your way to hell. Amen. And sorry I ruined it for you, but you'll stand before God without an excuse now. Because it's just simple, friend. Amen. Let me say that to you. The rich man in Luke 16, he died and went to hell. He didn't die and go to hell because he was rich. You can't find that for me in the Bible. You can't find that for me. He died and went to hell because he didn't know Christ. I mean, he didn't know Christ. Say, preacher, how do you know he didn't know Christ? Because the Bible says you should know a tree by the fruit that it bears. And the Bible tells us a little bit about that rich man's life. How Lazarus laid at his gate daily begging for the crumbs off his table. Amen. Uh, uh, do you ever think about that? He laid at the gate. Laid at the gate. We saw how a rich man treated Lazarus. That should tell you enough, amen, about which side he was on. Amen. Hey, can I say this? How you treat other people will tell other people enough about which side you're on. Amen. amen. Can I tell you that? Well, let me say this, friend. Let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. You will indeed, you will indeed, without a doubt, without any, any compromise, anything, friend, if you're lost, and you never accept Christ as your Savior, you will go to hell. We've sugarcoated it too much. Come on and get a song. Begin getting ready. We've sugarcoated hell too much. We was joking yesterday that uh, this weather would be a good time to preach on hell. Amen. It's hot. <laughs> Amen. And it ain't nothing compared to what hell's going to be like. Amen. I don't know about you, but I walked outside this morning and thought, Lord, how much do I have to go back in and put a suit on? <laughs> Amen. I walked, and I, I had flip-flops and shorts on, amen, walked outside, amen. Let me tell you, friend, amen, amen, you don't want to go to hell. Can I say that to you? Boy, if you miss everything else I say, listen to this, you don't want to go to hell, amen. But the opportunity to go to heaven is dwindling away, and it's going to be gone soon. Everyone stand that's not already standing. As they begin to play, if you have a need, if you ain't right with God, the altar is your place this morning. If you're lost, the altar is your place. Whatever you need, you come this morning.